Good morning. If you've just tuned in, where have you been? It's been the most amazing Friday morning. We've kickstarted the weekend, and of course, we've been so excited about the newly released movie titled The Beast. It was, of course, shot here in South Africa, and we've invited the National Council of SPCA's Wildlife Protection Units, who do vital work, mm -hmm. to chat about the protection of these beautiful wildcats who are under threat. I'm going to state that categorically. South Africa currently has between eight and 12,000 lions in captivity and not all of these facilities, a scary amount, are not meeting guidelines. And joining us this morning to take us through recent data is National Senior Inspector and Manager Douglas Volhata. Douglas, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the show. Morning, Graham, Zoe and your listeners. Thank you for having me. Oh, well, it's great that you are here because I would love for you to take us through the work that the NSPCA does and what some of your initiatives are regarding wildlife protection, especially for the wild cats. Oh, it would be great to expand on that. Um, the, the National Council of SPCA is, is the only animal welfare organization in South Africa that have our own Act of Parliament. So we govern by the SPCA Act 169 of 1993 which gives us specific powers in terms of enforcing the Animals Protection Act. So in terms of that, we get powers of a police officer um, in terms of the Animals Protection Act. So the council itself, we speak a lot to policy, regulation, uh, norms and standards. Uh, we comment on legislation and um, we carry out, obviously carry out inspections and carry out prosecution. And that, that in a nutshell is, is what we're about. Mm. Um, wild cats, and especially the lion industry that we've been so opposed to, uh, we, we actually refer back to two brilliant judgments that the council have had. And in 2016, we had a, a constitutional court ruling, which gave us the power to, to private prosecutions. We also, and in, in terms of that same judgment, we, it was a beautiful judgment because it stated conservation and um, animal welfare are intertwined value. And again, in 2019, we had the lion bone um, export quota case, which we won in the, in the High Court. And again, that was reinforced. So basically, what the, the, the end result is that you cannot have conservation without considering animal welfare. No decision can be made without taking welfare into consideration. So um, I uh, sorry to interject there. I, I love the fact that we are having action from the very highest level as it affects policy. I, I just can't escape the fact. I watched a, or I hosted a, a screening of a documentary, The um, Tiger Mafia, which opened my eyes to what's actually happening in that big cat space and what's happening in South Africa, and it was terrifying. Now, the NSPCA has recently stressed the urgency for an exit strategy for the closure of the captive line industry. So what are your concerns around this developing issue? Just cast a bit of light into this very dark space for us. Oh, absolutely, and thanks for that question. Um, so we actually met last week with uh, the Department of Environment, Forestries and Fisheries, uh, as well as a representative from Dalrod, uh, the old Department of Agriculture, and we expressed our concerns. We've, our inspectors, we're the only inspectors that get on the ground and act actively physically inspect these facilities. We see firsthand what's happening. And in, during the inspections, our inspectors have been asked, how do our farmers, how do they get out of this industry? It's hard to get out because there's huge costs involved. Um, and where do these animals go to? We, we obviously wouldn't want to see them going back into the trade. Um, and so, so there's really hard questions to be asked. Um, there is a, 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 an expert panel being going to be appointed, which we've been told we will be um, on, and we, we look forward to that. But right now, we need the exit strategy. Uh, farmers cannot afford to keep these animals anymore. So. We're seeing more and more concerns and more contraventions in terms of the Animals Protection Act. For just for a few, very briefly, vet care, um, hygiene, environmental enrichment. Um, it just it carries on again. Yeah. Inadequate shelters. I mean, shelters is a big thing. We, South Africa is a land of extreme temperatures that you can't even provide shelter to accommodate all the lions in one camp. So. If people don't have money to exit the industry, surely it is the time for us all to sit together and get an immediate plan on the go mm -hmm. and then tackle the expert panel for a longer term solution for yep. those that may not want to exit the industry. 
oh. a, a complete overhaul, and never mind what's happening at the end of this production line, because that's what it's become, ultimately, yeah. is a production line of lions. Now, um, I also wanted to ask you, Douglas, the life cycle of lions and tigers being kept in captivity has decreased. Can you take us through how their lives are different mm. as opposed to being out in the wild where they should be? Well, well absolutely. Um, I think that the very first thing that comes to mind is lions in the wild have choice. Lions in captivity have no choice. Mm. So firstly, their, their entire natural... Um, behavior, their, 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 their social structures are disrupted to, to an immense degree, which is actually in a, um, in a, in a captive facility, uh, lions can, they normally start their breeding cycles at around two, um, around five, six years old, those lions are ultimately either hunted or a, a reason is found for them to be put down or traded overseas. And um, in the, in the wild, a lion, obviously there's a lot of mortalities because you have lion pride takeovers and, and the rest of it. But again, that's the choice. So a lion in the wild can live anywhere from uh, 7 to 16 years at, at home. So it, what, what we're talking about is the quality of life. Mm. You know, the, the wealthy aspect of these lions in captivity, and that is the critical issue. Thank you so much for your efforts every day, working literally on the front lines in a very scary space, I would imagine. Um, thank you so much for affecting change on every level of society. And hopefully we can play our part in just educating and bring about that mass support. Um, we desperately need to protect our wildlife at all costs, especially when you deal with these bastions of the wild, like the lions and tigers, the big cats. They, for me, embody what it is to be a wild animal. And there are more of them in captivity than in the wild right now which makes the work of this incredible organization that much more important. So please, we're going to show all of the details that we can. If you want to support in any way from a corporate or even as an uh, individual, please visit their website, nspca.co.za. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And once again, thank you for the efforts that you and your team put in every day. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Incredible stuff. Clearly, a line has to be drawn in the sand, and we need a complete systemic overhaul, but it starts with us.